At the end of last year, I decided to upgrade my main workhorse camera from the A7 Mark II to this, the A7 Mark IV, and I've been super happy with it. I've had enough time now to formulate my thoughts and give you a proper idea of what it's like to use this camera, so here is my long-term review. Let's do a little quick rundown of the spec of this camera. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because there are many other videos out there by amazing creators that have spoken about the spec of this camera, but here is a very quick rundown. It's a hybrid focus camera with a 33 megapixel full frame sensor that can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second and 1080 up to 120. It features five axis in-body stabilization and a flip screen. Let's talk about where the a7 IV fits into Sony's lineup. They've got their three main lines of camera, their S line, their regular line, and their R line. Their R line focused mainly for photography, high megapixel cameras, their S line focused for video, very high quality video cameras, and this sits in the middle. And this is the successor to the a7 Mark III, which is arguably Sony's most successful camera. This camera promised to bring some big upgrades on that a7 III, and I'm happy to report it's definitely delivered. Let's talk about the physical changes on the body of the camera. And I think they are some of the most important changes that Sony made for this camera and some of the most worthwhile upgrades, especially if you've got big hands like me, because they've increased the size of the grip. It now has the same body type as the Sony A1 uh, and the Sony A7S III, uh, which is great, a deeper grip. It feels so much more uh, like sturdy in your hand. You get a much better grip. It is vastly improved. Uh, I can't underestimate how much better this grip is. I still have a little bit of pinky finger slippage, but I do have unusually large hands. Other changes, we've got a dedicated record button on the top, much better location for it. I haven't hit this record button by accident like many people reported on the a7 III, uh, and all of the buttons on the camera are just so much more tactile. It seems like a very small thing, but the buttons really do feel a hell of a lot better. It still has the joystick on the back, which I think is a great way of adjusting your focus points. I do like how it's a little bit larger, you get that tactile feel and it's really easy to use. We have an extra dial. It's a dedicated mode switch between photo, video and slow and quick mode, which is so helpful, especially considering this is a hybrid camera. It allows you to very quickly and easily switch between your photo and video modes or your slow and quick motion. Uh, so much easier. You can keep settings saved between the two so you don't have to keep going back and forth. If you're someone like me that shoots both photos and videos, that is beyond helpful. Then the final and probably most noticeable change on this camera is the fact that it has a flip LCD screen and this opens up so many possibilities. We've been asking for this on the Sony cameras for a very long time and finally they seem to be implementing them on pretty much all of their cameras, which I am super happy to see. And one final thing to mention in terms of the physical body, now the shutter closes when you turn off the camera. Very important, keeps your sensor clean, a brilliant feature. Should be implemented on the other cameras, it should just be a software thing, um, but I'm very glad that that's implemented on this camera. Lifesaver when it comes to changing your lenses. So that's all the physical changes made to the a7 IV that have really improved the body and the feel of this camera when it's in your hand. But that's no good if the images and video that it produces are no good. The photos that come out of this camera are simply brilliant. The 33 megapixel sensor is a great balance between enough megapixels to do some cropping, pretty hefty cropping as well, as well as not being too many that you struggle in low light. This camera is absolutely monstrous in low light. You'll really be able to throw the ISO up when you're out shooting at night. I did a whole video about shooting with this camera at night on the channel already. I did a night review of it. Uh, so go check it out if you're interested in that specifically. However, since that review, I've continued to be really, really happy with how it performs in the low light situations. One of the best things about taking photos on this camera is the autofocus system. It is simply brilliant. It doesn't let you down in pretty much any scenario. It's lightning quick and it's just very, very accurate. 
you get a wide different range of modes like we've seen on previous Sony cameras and the tracking is really impressive as well. They've definitely upped their game when it comes to their autofocus and honestly, I wouldn't ask for anything more. An important upgrade to this camera was the viewfinder. It has been improved from the a7 III. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily as good as it probably should be for this camera, but it has been massively improved and it's way clearer and brighter than it used to be. One of the things many people were really excited about with the a7 Mark IV was video and the upgrades that would come to this camera, including 4K60. And let's talk about the video. Firstly, 10-bit 422 looks incredible. I could not fault the image quality that comes out of this camera and the color bit depth. You get so much freedom when it comes to your color grading and you've got all that flexibility that 8-bit on previous cameras just didn't offer you. That is a massive upgrade in terms of video and it is just it is beautiful, I absolutely love it. Uh, and it's been one of the best things about using this camera. You can shoot uncropped 4K up to 4K 30. However, there is a 1.5 times crop when you go into 4K 60. And that's one of the elements of this camera that has been heavily criticized and has stopped some people from pulling the trigger and going, yes, this is the perfect camera I need. For some people, it will be a deal breaker. However, as I've gone about using this camera, I've realized that for me, 4K 60, being cropped in isn't a massive problem. I don't tend to shoot 4K 60 super wide. If I'm shooting 4K 60, it's likely I'm gonna be slowing that footage down. And a lot of the time I'm shooting close-ups. And in that scenario, sometimes the crop even benefits me so I can get even closer to my subjects to capture that extra detail. However, there are a few scenarios I can think of where this camera wouldn't suit your needs. If you're shooting real estate videos and you need that extra wide field of view, but you need it in 4K60, this camera won't cut it. You won't be able to find a lens that's wide enough that suits your needs. Sometimes weddings, a lot of people would like to film a lot of their weddings in 4K60 so they can slow down key moments. For you, the crop could potentially be an issue. However, if you're not in those categories, I can't think of many other situations where you really need that wide 4K60. The 4K on this camera is downsampled from 7K and that means it is absolutely pinpoint sharp and I've been absolutely blown away by it. Every time I get it up on my nice 4K monitor, I'm blown away by how detailed and sharp the 4K image that comes out of this camera is. I absolutely love the image quality that comes out of this camera and for video, it has been an absolute game changer. One thing that also has changed on the a7 Mark IV is the fact that it has dual SD card slots and one of those slots can also take CF Express cards. And that's super helpful, especially if you're a wedding photographer or videographer, you get that backup. You can record to both cards simultaneously or one and then the other, and it gives you way more storage in one go. Battery life on this camera has also significantly improved, of course, the battery life will depend on how much 4K 60 you're shooting or whether you're shooting photos or 4K 24. Um, so I can't really give you an exact number, um, but I'd say for an average shoot, I'm probably changing it every two to three hours, which to be honest is pretty decent. If I'm not doing anything too intensive, it can easily go for much longer than that. Another talking point that seems to be raised a lot in the video community at the moment is the overheating of cameras, especially those that shoot 4K or 8K in high frame rates. I haven't experienced any overheating problems with this camera. If you shoot continuously in 4K 60, you will notice that the camera does get hot, and I know that some people have experienced it uh, shutting off or getting a temperature warning. However, if you keep the flip screen out, which if you're filming yourself or some other bits, it's most likely that you do, uh, it will run on continuously. I haven't had any problems with this. I don't shoot 4K60 for extended periods of time anyway, but that's just something to keep in mind. Right, as the sun sets here in the forest, let me give you my evaluation, my conclusion, my thoughts on the Sony A7 Mark IV. And I've got to say, as you can probably guess, I absolutely love this camera. It really fits all of my needs super well. I guess the main disadvantage of this camera is that if you do need that 4K uncropped 60 frames per second, you're gonna need to look at something else because it just doesn't offer that for you. But in every other facet, it does such a great job. And for me, it ticks all the boxes for a brilliant hybrid camera. And that is it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave it a like and comment down below if you do have any more questions. I haven't covered every single tiny facet of this camera, but I didn't want this video to be hours long. I could go on forever talking about this camera. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.